we don't know how to talk about race in America. All what we do, we don't do it very well. It's an uncomfortable conversation for us for a whole bunch of different reasons. Some people don't want to remember the pain who went through it. Other people don't want to remember the pain because they're going to think, well, I, why are you making me responsible for something that I wasn't around for? Uh, by the way, can't we get past this? Uh, our history is good, bad, and ugly. And I think that if we continue to ignore the fact that we have an, we've had an ugly history, we've had a bad history, some good as well, right. but we can't ignore the fact that whether it's the monuments, whether it's housing, whether it's schools, this is all intentional. And we have to do our, our jobs, I think, as public servants today, is to continue to unwind what has, was intentionally bound together a long time ago. What you can't, in my opinion, what you cannot do is deny who put them up, why they put them up, right. and then they were put up, and there is a difference, my friends, there is a difference between remembrance, mm -hmm. which we should always do because we don't ever want to repeat it, and reverence, mm -hmm. which is to say we put you up because we honor what you did yeah. so that maybe we can do it again, <laughs> comma, again. I've been talking about how Richmond is an inclusive uh, and competitive place, mm -hmm. and as as the mayor said, it speaks to who you are. And on the inclusive side of things, if you see those monuments and you're a young black kid, it doesn't speak to being, to me, inclusive. Because I think when they were there in the 1890s and the 1900s, early 1900s, they were there to say, look who's still in charge. Maybe on the paper it says, you all have the right to do this or the right to do that, but we want you to know who's still in charge. That's why they're so grand. I mean, they are there to send a true message that we are this high and you're this low. Every time you Google search Richmond, Wikipedia Richmond, it says Richmond, Virginia, comma, the former Capitol Confederacy. We are a lot more than the former Capitol Confederacy. And we all here know that. But if we continue to live by the status quo, then that's all we will be in people's minds right. around this world and around this country. We have got to figure out a way how to talk to each other in a constructive and thoughtful way. You know, I said that the most six important words in the English language are I am sorry and I forgive you. We have to create ourselves in each of our communities a comfortable place for people to have hard discussions where we can be soft on the people and hard on the problem. We're going to have to construct it ourselves. I, for, you know, I, I will forgive you. Particularly if you atone to what you said that you did was wrong. However, I do expect action after that. I do expect investing in, in our schools. I do expect investing in housing. I do expect you know, working to, uh, to on, on criminal justice reform. Right. But I need to see action right. along with that. Well, if I'm going to give you forgiveness, I want the exchange to be some action as well. Right. And I think for a long time, decades now, we've just been saying I'm sorry without getting any action in return. <laughs> but don't come talk to me about what you want and not tell me how to get there and that you're willing to help. That, I mean, I'm just a person. I mean, I represent you, right? When you come tell me you want me to do something for you and you don't want to pay for it, and then you're going to complain that you don't have it, that dog don't hunt. So we got to get proximate with each other again. And we have, to, we have to be able to be uncomfortable because neither of us are all right. None of us are all right and neither of us are all right. <laughs> so my question to your community, if you want to talk about coverage, is where's the community coverage around this kind of thing? If this is what you want to do, and if after you decide this and think about it and discern it, you want to contextualize it, where's your courage to go tell the council member in the back, thank you so much for that, but we think you're wrong. And this is why we think you're wrong. That kind of stuff that your community has to decide amongst itself. I've known you, Mayor, for a very, very long time, and. Um, it's not all the time when you get great mayors in your city and when you have one you ought to hang on to. He's done a really, really good job. One of the, one of the things that you can feel when you walk into a, a town or a city, I mean, you can do this immediately because the city can't hide. You can see the city through the people's faces. People are either hopeful, are they despondent, they're optimistic, are they not? They feel like things are going great or they don't. And you can actually feel it on the ride in from the airport. And it, it, if the city feels like it's a, a city that's growing and a city that's ascendant, and, um, and maybe you've done a really good job. Give your leaders, either you lead, or give your leaders room to do the hard things. And take us where we have to go, not where we need to go. And then things will, things will get better.